You ever just get so into a game you don't even realize you're learning something? Uh, all the time. Like you're totally strategizing in Catan, mm -hmm. right. trying to outsmart everyone at the table. Yep. And then it hits you that problem solving could actually help you at work or with some tricky project. It's funny how that happens. That's what a well-designed gaming simulation can do. Yeah. It's learning disguised as fun, and they're way more common than people might realize. For sure. So today, we're going deep into gaming simulations. Oh, yeah. How to spot them, uh -huh. how they're designed, yeah. and why they work so well. Sounds good. And to guide us on this deep dive, we're turning to George Otoyu's articles. Great choice. You've been wanting to crash course on this, right? I have. This is right up my alley. Otoyu really gets into the nitty gritty of it all. Like, uh, he even points out that gaming simulations are becoming really popular in workplaces now. Yeah, I've noticed that. Companies are realizing that it's a really good way to train their employees. Oh, yeah. Way more engaging than sitting through a boring old lecture, that's for sure. Definitely. But I'm curious, how do we know if something is a true gaming simulation? Okay. Or is it just like, a simplified version of something else. I see what you mean. Is there something specific that makes it a simulation? Yeah, that's a good point. Not every activity that's simplified can be called a real gaming simulation. Okay. It needs to be designed with a purpose. There yeah. has to be a clear link between the game and the real life situation it's supposed to. Like mirror. I see. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes total sense. Okay, good. So how do you take that idea of experiential learning? Okay and actually build a good gaming simulation from it. Right. Is there some like formula? Yeah. Or is it more like, you know, an uh, art? Well, Otoyu actually gives us a pretty structured approach. Okay, yeah. I'm ready. What is it? Okay, so picture this. Uh, you need to train a team okay. to handle a big product launch. All right. So you'd start by figuring out okay. the most important parts of a product launch. Right, so you're not... Like, what are the potential problems? What are the big decisions? Throwing them to the walls. Exactly. Yeah. You're essentially making a blueprint, but you're building a learning experience. Okay. Not an actual building and mm -hmm. just like a blueprint. You need to simplify things. You want to keep it focused on what's really important. Get rid of the clutter. Exactly. Yeah. So it's like taking a complicated recipe. Right. One with tons of ingredients. A million steps. Yeah and making it something a beginner cook could handle. I like that. You're making it manageable, yeah, but still true to the real thing. And this is where it gets interesting. Okay. You take that blueprint, okay, and you turn it into an interactive activity. That's your simulation. Cool. It might be a board game. Uh-huh. Maybe a computer program. Yeah, yeah. Or even some role playing. Lots of options. So they're playing the game. Right. But really they're learning. Exactly. They're taking what they learn in the simulation. And hopefully applying it back to that real product launch. It's like a test run for their skills. I like it. So they get to practice. Yes. They get to experiment. Okay. Make mistakes. Yeah. And it's all safe because there are no real world consequences. Right. You don't get fired in the simulation. Exactly. And when do we ever get a chance to go back and try again in real life? Simulations let you do that. That's a good point. Now, you mentioned before that uh, Toyu talks about two different ways to design a simulation. Yes. There was the step-by-step -step one. Right. And then another one that had these very specific phases. Yeah. He calls it a four-phase approach. System analysis, design specification. Wow. Okay. Gaming simulation design, and then development and construction. Intense. Yeah. That's a mouthful. <laughs> Shall we take notes on those? Well, notes are never a bad idea. But Otoyu does say that which method you use really depends on, you know, the specific simulation and what you're trying to achieve. Okay, so no one right answer. Right. One size doesn't fit all in the simulation world. Just like, well, pretty much everything in life. Exactly. And speaking of fitting, it's just like with any game, really, you got to test it out. Make sure it actually works. Yes. Make sure it's fun to play or... Well, engaging, I guess, for the people learning. And that it actually helps them learn what you want them to learn, you know? Right, got to make sure it's effective. And of course, the instructions have to be super clear. Can't have anyone getting lost along the way. Totally. That just leads to frustration. Okay, so we've got our simulation all designed. It's been tested. Instructions are crystal clear. Time to play. But you mentioned earlier, it's not just about the playing, right? Oto, you said something about that. Definitely not. He talks about how a well-designed gaming simulation actually has three parts to it. The briefing, 
the playing and the debriefing. Okay, like a three-act play. Or a three-course meal. You've got to have all the parts to make it work. Ooh, I like the food analogy. Yeah. All right, so walk me through this three-course simulation. What's the briefing part? So the briefing is all about setting the scene, you know. Getting everyone on the same page. Exactly. Yeah. Laying out the rules, making sure everyone understands what their role is. And I think most importantly, getting them in the right mindset to learn. Mm -hmm. Setting the mood. So they don't go into the simulation feeling lost. Right. And it's also a chance for whoever's running things, the facilitator, to really emphasize how the game connects to real life. Tie it all together. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Then comes the main course, the playing stage. This is where they actually get to put everything into action. The rubber beats the road. Exactly. Making yeah. decisions, seeing what happens, and hopefully learning some things along the way. And it's a safe space, right? They can't get fired in the simulation, like you said. Right. Mistakes are part of learning here, and this is another spot where the facilitator can really make a difference. Guiding things, asking good questions, you know, being a good coach. Okay, so we've had our appetizer, our main course, now bring on the dessert. That's the debriefing, right? You got it! This is where everything comes together. Participants take a step back from the game. Reflect on the experience. Yes. They start to see how the simulation connects back to their own lives. I bet there are a lot of aha moments in the debriefing. Totally. Like you need that time to process everything you just went through. Otherwise, it's like eating a meal and not even tasting it. So we're asking ourselves what worked, what didn't. Exactly. What surprised you? What would you do differently next time? And how does this all apply to my life outside the game? You nailed it. And this part, the debriefing, it connects to something called Kolb's learning cycle. Which is? It's this idea that we learn best when we go through these stages, right? We have the experience, then we think about it, then we understand it, and then we try it out ourselves. Simulations let us do that in a safe way. Exactly. And a good facilitator guides people through those stages. It's pretty cool. It really is. Yeah. No wonder Otoy is such a big fan of simulations. He talked about how effective they are because we learn by doing. Mm -hmm. And it's like we're naturally drawn to games. It's true. Plus, they give us that chance to practice things we might not want to try in real life, at least not at first. Right. It's all about experimenting without the real world risk. And he made a good point about simulations being used for more than just training. Oh, yeah. He said they could even help with things like personal growth. Right. Or big organizational changes or research. So many possibilities. Who knew that games could be so powerful? It makes you wonder what else we could use them for. Education, healthcare, maybe even some of those big problems like climate change. It's given me a lot to think about. This yeah. whole deep dive has been amazing. I especially loved that three-course meal analogy. Really breaks it all down. It's a good one. So listeners, what about you? Where could you use a little simulation magic in your own lives? What challenges are you facing that maybe, just maybe, a little game-based thinking could help with? Until next time.